the difference in this game for me from last year is they have to answer one question. Can the Tennessee defense get two or three more stops than they did a year ago? Hutton, let me give Which you a stat. Which is the for, for big games all They're year. pulling the upset. Let me give you a stat on that. Because T- let, let me go a step further with my point, though. I think they can stay toe-to-toe with anyone doing what they're doing and not having to answer that specific question, except for Alabama and Georgia. Those are the two. So it... In those matchups, to me, that's the number one question. And I know you've done some digging on the numbers, Chad, to either reassure me or, uh, or try to flip me on my line of thinking where you, you turn it, you have a fumble, you turn it over on downs, or the defense is, can't get off the field, and all of a sudden a one-possession game turns into a two-possession game, and you just can't catch up late in the fourth quarter. Shocking stat of the day. Stop rate percentage is a great indicator of defensive success. You know, we talk about yardage and points, and this is a great indicator of your defensive success rate, your, your stop percentage. Yeah. Tennessee is 20th nationally. They're tied with NC State in stop rate percentage. That's a spot ahead of Georgia. Tennessee's defense is better than Georgia's defense statistically so far this season in stop rate percentage. Now, Bama is sixth <laughs> nationally. Okay. So they are elite. And if you look at yardage points, uh, pass, uh, passing defense, rushing defense, they're top 10. Bama is in everything, every category defensively. Tennessee is top 10 in rushing defense, not in passing defense. But keep this in mind, too. In games that have mattered, Tennessee is also the only team in America to have three top 25 wins so far. There's plenty with two. Tennessee has three. In those games, I'm taking out the other ones um, because they just dominated Ball State and Akron, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in those three other games, Florida, they could not stop them. Now, Florida got a lot of fourth downs, too. There were a lot of stops. Very aggressive. That Florida then went for on fourth down and and got it. And LSU tried to do the same thing but failed on fourth down. Three times they went for it and did not get any of them. Um, So Tennessee was not good against the pass against Florida. Gave up a lot of... And it was also, they're up 17 and give up a couple scores and a ton of yards late yep. when they're basically in a pre-event right. defense where they weren't very good at closing that game out, but they win the game. Um, against LSU, I really thought they were terrific throughout defensively. Did exactly what they needed to. I mean, they, they hold them to 13 points, and one of those a late touchdown when they're up you know 37-7 to seven at that point. So really good defensively in that game. Against Pitt, they started out horrifically against Keaton Slovis and Pitt. They're about to go down 17-0, and they get that interception in the back of the end zone by Trey Flowers, and the game started to turn for them. They end up taking a lead before halftime. Then they get the backup quarterback in the second half, and they dominate it. The, their only problem was self-inflicted wounds giving Pitt great field position. Yep. Defense really shut down the backup quarterback, who then also was injured late in the game, but defense was good. I say all this just to say that what we think about Tennessee's defense – needing to be just okay to win, I believe is correct in most games, like you said, Hutton. But there's a potential this defense may be better than okay. And if they're better than okay, they're dominating most of the teams left on their schedule. And they're going to be right there with Alabama and Georgia. I mean, if it's a good defense and a good defensive performance against those teams, they're going to have a puncher's chance with that offense to win. 